I'm going to convert a DXF file into a 3D model in uh, Fusion 360. There's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, a lot of times you can just grab the dimensions off the DXF, but if you get a decent enough DXF file, you can uh, make this go really fast. So I'm going to do it here. So what I've got uh, AutoCAD pulled up. Um, I'm going to copy and paste all the uh, profiles of the part that I need. You're going to need a side profile and a top profile on most parts. Sometimes you need more, but this one, I just need the two. And then you got to prepare the DXF files. Uh, just get rid of all these um, all these lines that, that are shown to show like the like the cutout from AutoCAD. Uh, they just they make it. It would take a long time to do it in Fusion to extrude everything. You'd have to click and in, click into all those spots. So if you clean it up kind of nice ahead of time, it makes your life a lot easier in the end. Now you need to save it as a DXF file to import it into Fusion 360. Now let's get the, the top cover and we'll do the same thing. This one doesn't need a lot of uh, extra cleanup work. Same deal, save as DXF file. This job is going to be a little bit trickier because I'm going to change the logo on this one. I find that Fusion isn't the best for changing graphic designs if you have any kind of graphic design background. Um, I could do it a lot faster in Adobe Illustrator, so I'm going to do it here. Just got to check, make sure a couple things are right. Like up here in the right side, the size, we know it's going to be 4.2 inches. So uh, that checked out okay. Sometimes you run into weird issues when you're importing DXF files into Illustrator. Now we need to delete the art, the artwork that we don't need. And then we got to paste in the artwork that we're going to use and line it up and resize. It just seems to be a lot faster and easier to do outside of Fusion. I'm using Adobe Illustrator to do my graphics. It's a paid subscription, so it's not for everybody, but there's tons of free software out there and they all kind of work the same. As you can see, it's just a lot easier to scale and align in, in a graphic design software. Um, you, can re you can scale by dimension. Uh, another thing I like to do is I put in an outline mode. It's Control Y on your keyboard in Illustrator. And as you can see, it's really easy to align um, your graphic to where you want it to be. Then make sure all the, the stroke of all your artwork's the same. Um, just better that way. Now you need to export the DXF file so we can re-import it into Fusion 360. All right, back in Fusion, let's import our DXF. Let's do the side profile first because we're going to generate the body off of that. <laughs> Start with a new component. Insert DXF. Now, once you've imported the DXF, just hit OK and just check it out. Make sure everything's OK. DXFs are really bad. Sometimes the lines are broken and you'll see like uh, when it should be blue, you'll see like white areas. So you got to go in there and fix that before you can do anything. And then now let's position the DXF file. Um, first, let's rotate it because I want to be looking at the front of it. And now let's, after we've rotated it, let's do a point to point move. Select the point you want. Select the center of the origin. Now let's, let, now let's do a revolve and see what the uh, DXF looks like. Okay, so we got to go in there and fix that DXF because now it's generating a weird body because of those fins. So it's really simple. Edit the sketch. Just draw a line to blue out 
those uh, the the fin cutouts. Okay, and now let's do a revolve again, and now we'll select the inside of the fin area as well. Okay, that gives us the flat surface we need. We're gonna add the fins now. Just hit OK. Now I'm gonna insert the DXF for the top of the part. I'm gonna put a new offset plane on the top of the part. I always like to put a sketch, uh, put a point in a sketch for the uh, center of the piece that I'm gonna import. I run into a lot of issues with the move tool. Um, this way just it ensures that I'm not gonna have any problems doing that. So once that's done, now we can insert the DXF. Find your file. Now we need to rotate the uh, DXF in, in the position. Then once it's ready to go, use the move tool to go uh, to do a point to point move. And now it's ready to go. The next thing we have to do is create our ball mill cuts. As you can see, some of the some of the ball mill cuts go all the way across the part and some don't. So we're going to have to do this in a couple of steps, but it's pretty easy. Let's start by creating an offset plane along a path. Select the longest path and then make sure the distance is set to zero and hit OK. Now let's take a look at the side of the part. This is where we're going to start. This is where we're going to add our ball mill lines. Let's create a sketch. I like to turn the body off when I do this so I don't get confused as to where I'm at. Now let's project in all the uh, paths we're going to use to generate our ball mill toolpath. Now when we measure the distance between the two tool paths, we're going to use this information for our pattern. All right, once that's done, click on the look at so it brings us back to the sketch origin and we're going to create our ball mill uh, circles, tools, whatever. And then Fusion kind of does some weird stuff when you're doing constraints, so just try to move them into place a little bit. Use a horizontal vertical constraint. Now we need to um, we need to set the um, the ball mill path into the part a little bit. Then do a tangent dimension uh, from the projection that we made for the for the ball mill path. Now we can do our ball mill pattern. Create rectangular pattern. Select our objects, direction, just pull down the arrow. Sometimes that's the easiest way to do it. We need to do seven of these at 0.5. Change the distribution to spacing. And then just yank it out again and then put in 0.5 again. Now we have all of our ball mill pass ready to cut. I'm going to take a non-destructive approach at creating the fin cuts. I, I find that this is like a little bit better to to do it this way because sometimes you just make mistakes on like your uh, let's just say that cover if we mess up somewhere what we're going to do is we're going to generate the fin tools and then if we ever didn't did need to go back and change something all the all the tools are ready to go so we don't have to do this again so we just have to do this one time and we're done so instead of cutting it here I'm going to turn these into new bodies and hit OK now we've got our our basically our our cut our tools to cut the fins, and now we got to make the uh, smaller cuts here. I'm just going to make one of them, and make sure you turn off the other tools because sometimes they're kind of connected and it'll merge these bodies together, so just isolate it on its own. And next, we need to do is make a pattern of this of this tool. And then we just need two of them. 
at 0.5. Next, we're going to mirror these. Turn the body back on so you can see what you're doing. Select your bodies, select your plane. And that's basically it. Next, we need to do is uh, use a combine tool to cut the fins out of the body. So select combine. Your target body is your, your cover, and then your cut tools are all the little the fin cuts we made, or the fin tools we made. Keep And make sure you select keep tools, because you may want to use them later, obviously, just in case we messed up somewhere. Looks like that's all we really need to do. Next, I'm going to render the engraving in Photoshop, because it's... You just can't do it in Fusion. It's really tough. You know, I forgot to organize my uh, my bodies and stuff. I, I like to name everything. So it's always a good idea just to go through and just name the bodies something that will remind you what they are. Because, you know, we're at like seven bodies now and it could get confusing if you need to share this with somebody. Or just if you haven't looked at it in like a year or so. Um, now we could just kind of read what we did. Another thing I'll do is I'll duplicate the body and make a, a new component for the body. And um, and then I'll actually share, I'll actually save this new component in a complete new file. Cause you know, if you're gonna be sharing this with people, you don't know what skill level, skill level they're at and you don't want any mistakes to be made. Um, and this really is just a good way just to isolate the final uh, model and just just to ensure that nothing happens okay now that you have the body as a new component the final body as a new component it's really easy to move the the component to a new fusion file at this point so just open up a new file and then you can right mouse button click and paste and that's all you got to do just save it at that point Now let's just take a quick look and see how the engraving looks when we manufacture it. We just use a very simple pr trace program. I don't know why I find this mesmerizing, but I love watching the um, <laughs> the simulations. <laughs> Next, let's render this engraving. First thing you need to do is export the the cover as a PNG. I've kind of decided it's next to impossible to render an engraving in Fusion 360. It's just the the artwork's just too complicated and it, it takes forever and it's really hard to do. So I just pretty much pull the engraving out or I pull the the a part out of Fusion 360, put it in Photoshop, and just render it in Photoshop. It is way easier. I'm confident I could render this at any angle or on a sphere. It's very simple. So just bring in your artwork, and then once you have the artwork placed to where you want it, double click on the layer, and it'll bring up the effects panel. And in there, there's a couple of things. You just play around with it. Uh, there's really no wrong or right way to do it. It's really to look. Um, and as you can see, I'll just go through it. It just takes me a couple minutes um, to see what I come up with. I could, you could spend 10 minutes or an hour on this, but um, this is really the way to do it because you're really going to get a realistic look. Um, and a lot of times, it's really just for visual purposes. It doesn't have to... Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to look pretty good. Also, if you have an Adobe subscription, there's some other software that they have that I'm confident you can just bring in the engraving and um, it'll do all this for you right off the bat. They've got, I forget the name, but it just, it's for like placing, making products. And, and then I'm sure there's something you could do in Blender where it's, you literally just bring it in and you're done.